Um, you know, I always think about before we move on, you know, a lot of rappers who had issues with Puff. I wonder, do you think Big would have had issues with him by now? I feel like if he probably he stayed would have. On, I did hear, I did hear that uh, through certain interviews, obviously, but definitely not through insiders. But they were saying that, yeah, he was, he was really going to leave. Yeah, I um, heard that too. Cause and that might that might have been you know, especially think about that if he left and Pop, you know, was going to do the One Nation thing. Yeah, and if they if if they were still alive and they were still together, you know how crazy that shit would have been. Exactly. They've been like, yeah, let's just smash the beef and let's make music. Man, it should have been crazy. Yeah, that should have been crazy. But yeah, but I, um, you know, just you know, because of, in light of recent events with Mace and you know the history of Puff just having issues with the locks and you know, oh, it's always over money with him, man. So man, it's like, no, nah, man, because he's not a person; he's a frequency, man. This brother love. <laughs> he said I'm man. a frequency. He brother love, you know, nigga. If you really want love, you gotta give me money. You yeah, know? you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, I gotta brother hold your love. royalties. <laughs> I love, love royalties equal love. You know, you I need know those royalties. Need royalties. You know, I'm trying to build a school, a school of love. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but uh, but yeah, man. You know, um, I don't know. I could see Big having some problems with him, but I think Puff knew Big was like his bread and butter, so he probably wouldn't have crossed him too hard. Nah, but he probably would have done a little something because he just greedy. You know, I think he just loves that money. And I get it. You know what I mean? Money take can that. bring out that corruptness. Take that. <laughs> take that, take that, take that, take that. <laughs> I told you that we won't stop. You know? I thought I told you that we won't stop. I would like to see, I ain't gonna lie though, I would like to see like, you know, since they're doing documentaries of like Woo, and, right. you know, NWA, like they did one, you know, pop, I would like to see like a, like a whole bad boy, like, the rise and fall, you know what I'm saying? Like, a, and then like the death row, like a rise and fall. Yeah. Like an actual cinematic, you know, them, them telling the story, you know, because I know they're going to fudge things, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, but of course. I would still like to see that and see how that would play out. Yeah, yeah, you know? I would love to see that. I would love to see that. Um, but yeah, I guess we can uh, move on to the next, you know what I mean? Um, Want to talk about Pete Rock and cannabis or something else? That's crazy, man. So Ain't I'm that? trying to figure out what was, you know. So they were just they were just saying that this was produced by my man and yeah, because I I saw that cannabis had put the project out, but I actually thought when I first saw it, it was on a, a random YouTube channel, and it just said cannabis album. I think it was called the letter C, something like that C, and it just said produced by Pete Rock, and I thought. It was one of those internet mashups, like yeah, somebody yeah, who yeah. just made their own mashed up album. But later on, I did find out it was a real album. And so uh, Pete Rock is saying that basically he didn't authorize any of that, you know what I mean? And it's not his music and they shouldn't be putting him down as a producer. And, you know, he most so criticized cannabis's, um people, like his managers and people. M80, something like yeah, that. Yeah, M80. M80. So he was criticizing the people around cannabis, but he did kind of throw cannabis's name in there too. You know, like, you know, you corny for letting him do that. You know, basically. He didn't say that, but he said something to that effect. And so, but the dude, M80, is like, I think he's like his manager, and he's like, yo, I got texts, I got receipts showing that I had conversations with you over getting these beats from you, getting them authorized, blah, 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 and you were even asking for extra money because you felt like you should get more money. And he was even showing, like, images of it, you know what I mean, on his, um, it was either Twitter or Instagram or something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm anxious to see, you know, if Cannabis is going to talk about it because um, I think Cannabis, you know, has a lot of respect for Pete Rock, and I don't, you know. Oh, yeah, I mean, Pete Rock's a legend, man. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's 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 dope that you know they even but p rock is acting like it's not even his beats so i don't know if he's saying that i gave you beats but you changed them or i never gave you beats at all that's what i'm trying to figure yeah, out what yeah, is yeah. the actual beef and it just sounds to me more so like pete rock did give him some beats but maybe they you know they were like yeah and, you know, they were just like maybe some experimental stuff right. it wasn't like you know top notch pete rock stuff it was just like, oh yeah, 
if you want to, eh, I'll just give it to you. And then, like, they just put his name on it because, yeah. Yeah, and my thing is, you know, if monies were exchanged, then there should be some level of respect for that. Now, if Pete Rock, if you really did feel like it wasn't enough money, you should have just gave him the money back and said, nope, give me my beats back. I don't like it. So that's one angle it could be. But then on the other side, it's like, did you give them beats and maybe they just, their engineers just kind of manipulated the beats and it don't sound like what you gave them. Yeah. Maybe you don't just like, you don't like it because it don't sound, sound like, like what you gave you, them. Yeah. So it's, it's got to be one of those things. Maybe it's the money or maybe it's just the, it don't sound right. Because he actually told Cannabis that he didn't sound good. He was like, yo, you don't even sound good on this album, man. You know, I'm like, damn. That's kind of rough for him to say, say that. Because it's like, yeah, even if you don't like the beat, you can at least, you know, give him respect for his rhymes. Yeah. Yes, Cannabis ain't no slouch no. on the rhymes. You know what I mean? So I can't see him having whack rhymes on there. So. Speaking of which, check out Channel Zero, the breakdown that I did. Yes, sir. That was a good one. Yeah, yeah. man. That was the latest uh, breakdown from Howie this week. Channel Zero. Should have done the voice. Um, you know, just, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm a cannabis voice. Yo. yo take a pyramid to tetrahedron. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah so I'm going to stop. But then, yeah. You your vocals after mine. mine. That's, that's a, a bitch move. move. Something the whole rapper would do. And when you sing your platinum, you only drop it crew. You know? <laughs> cannabis is that dude, man. Yeah. Um, so yeah man shout out to Cannabis and I hope the issue gets resolved in a peaceful manner yeah definitely because I mean both of them are legends yeah right. you know what I mean Cannabis Cannabis is a legendary rapper and Pete Rock is a legendary producer Um, so yeah and rapper yeah Yeah. and rapper he's dope with the raps too but um, his his production is just more so top tier oh yeah yeah oh yeah definitely for me anyway you know I'll say that so yeah so um, you know if y'all have any uh updates or information on that latest Pete Rock and Cannabis, let us know in the comments so we can check that out and we'll keep y'all posted on anything that we find out about that as well. So, yep. Um, so, yeah, we got a couple more things to talk about. What do you want to talk about first? Uh, the- well, we can talk about uh, the shooting, which we already kind of talked about, but yeah, the yeah, only thing I can say, man, they man, these groups are really scared. Yeah. They yeah. are really, they really are, are scared about like, oh, black people going to replace us. Yeah. Oh, or they going to do to us the same thing that we did to them. They get, right. I mean, so it's it was just, okay when y'all did it. Y'all yeah, did it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all, <laughs> y'all, y'all can't do that. How you know? dare you want to get revenge on us? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And but, it's just um, like, if really, you know, most of the time, you know, we just wanted to be left alone. We proved that in Oklahoma and Tulsa. Mm-hmm. We just want to be left alone. You didn't want to leave us alone because you were scared that, you know, anything we do and we're left alone, we get, you know, we rise up and all this other stuff. And y'all don't want that. And y'all get scared. Yeah. So y'all carry, it's a threat to y'all. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> they found enough evidence on the dude from the Buffalo shooting, yeah. that, you know, showed that he was all about. Black people are trying to take over in numbers, so we need to cut their numbers back. You know, all I that nationalism. I and, just don't get that. Right. If you, if you, if you, why you need to cut the numbers back? If y'all are having a problem with up, y'all got all this science with y'all. Y'all, y'all doing these little baby incubator yep. joints. Yep. Y'all doing like sperm banks, all this stuff. But for some reason, y'all can't get your numbers up. You fucking. You know? And you can't, your shit ain't sticking right. or nothing. Like, <laughs> get your numbers up. Get man. your numbers up. You know? Why you gotta kill us? And we ain't bothering you. Exactly. All of a sudden, we just minding our business. We just want. I'm doing. I'm trying to enjoy my little life, and you know, enjoy my little. You know, like Harry Spears say, my little trip to the buffet, get my plate, come back. Right. I'm good. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's all we try. Mm-hmm. Most for the most part. That's what most people trying to do. Y'all yeah. up here like, man, they gonna take over. And yeah. Like, <laughs> a white dude talking about, you don't want us to shine. <laughs> you don't want us to shine. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you what. You know Y'all what I mean? need to get out. We got great. Like, I mean, it's, it's like, to me, it's just stupid, man. Because it's like, if you just leave us alone, we won't. Right. We're not we don't bother. give a fuck about what y'all we're not gonna, We're not bothering yeah. y'all. Yeah. I mean, okay. Let me, let, let, let's break let's break this down. Okay. How black people, the most dangerous 
most threatening people towards everybody else. So we kill each other. We get killed by fast food. Yep. We get killed by the police. Mm-hmm. We, you know what I'm saying? Now, those three, the, we, the products that we use kill us, like smoking and all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, we still got numbers. Yep. And then we don't man, we don't manufacture guns, hardly. We don't manufacture liquor, nope. hardly. We don't manufacture. Well, that shit is important. Yeah, we don't and manufacture cigarettes and, and smokes and stuff like that. We don't deal with nuclear weapons because you won't let us develop. So really, to me, who's who's the one knocking? Numbers off, right. right? It's y'all. Yeah, y'all knock your own numbers off. Y'all, I mean, y'all try to get us, but in getting us, you knock your own shit off. Yep, exactly. So like, it ain't a, hey, it know me, baby. Right, it know me. It know me. It not right. black. Nope, it's not black. I try to do my Godfrey shit. <laughs> it's not black, man. <laughs> I love God for you. Yeah, it's hilarious, man. Oh, man. So yeah, man. I mean, you know, just you know, condolences again, you know, to the victims of um, the mass shootings all around the country, and you yeah, know, man. it's really sad to you know see that happening. But you know, mostly it's us that are trying to keep to ourselves and stay out of trouble. Yeah, you know, of really course, are. you know, you got you know, you got a lot of this gang activity and dumb shit like that, but that's. A small fraction of us as yeah, people. Yeah. And, so, but they want to highlight that. Yeah, to make it seem like, see, like that's the problem. But mm-hmm. nah. Yeah, that's that's the problem. They they try to put the spotlight on stuff like that. So like, see, see, see what the blacks are doing? The blacks. You know? The malarkey. The, you know, oh. the hoodlums. <laughs> oh, those yeah. savages. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, we got to we gotta get our numbers up for people like us who are trying to show a positive uh, side to to us as a people yeah, and show man. that you know we're not all just out here trying to start trouble and nah, I do just, all that shit. Man. I don't care who you are, that. man. We try to we try to look peaceful. Mm-hmm. I don't care who you are. I try to help out everybody. Yeah, you know the best way I can. You know what I'm saying. I'm trying to live. You know I'm trying to live my life and try to you know try to be a better version of Howie every day. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? absolutely. That's, that's man. it. But, you know, it is what it is, man. So, um, you know, again, just condolences. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, move on to our final topic. Well, let's talk about let's talk about the Kid Creole thing. Oh, yeah, we can. We can. My bad. Um, Again, shout out to Godfrey for bringing that on to the um, on his podcast. And shout out to the gentleman telling the story. Right. Um, Yeah, man. I man, we, we free Kid Creole. Free kid Creole. Free man. kid Creole. I'm yeah, serious, man. man. Like that's they they railed this dude. And um, you know, basically, I mean, it was an incident where, you know, he worked the late shift kid Creole, you know, because after rap, you know, he was just going back to being just a regular person, you know, just doing his thing. And he um I think this was like twenty seventeen, right around the time we started the uh, podcast. podcast. Yep. Um, just shout out to that. We, you know, we'll we'll probably be celebrating our five year anniversary on our next episode, probably. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, because it was around the end of May, you know. Yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll do that uh, next week. Um, but yeah. Anyway, uh, Kid Creole's walking to work, and you know he's walking by, and there's a guy posted up on the wall in front of a building, and I guess the guy said something to him. Um, I don't know if he was soliciting him for money. Uh, there are some rumors about him being gay, so maybe he was soliciting him, like, let me holler at you, you know, you cute, you know, that flirtatious type of shit. It could have been any number of things. But either way, Kid Creole just, you know, basically didn't engage him. He, I guess he kind of responded and kept on walking, like, nah, I'm good. Whatever it is, I'm good. And so eventually the guy starts following him, antagonizing him. You know what I mean? And so that's what kind of led up to it. And then what's funny is after the interaction, when Kid Creole finally pulled out his knife because he was oh, being... What up, what up? I I'm that? sorry, that was Danelle. What up, what up, oh, what up, up what Danelle? up, Danelle? What shout up, out, shout out, shout out. But after Kid Creole, you know, got enough, you know, he got to the point where he was tired of being 
uh, antagonizing Pope and all of that, he pulls out his own little knife and gets to do it a couple good times. And after that was over, the dude walked away with like, like, like he was good. So, you know, Kid Creole was looking at it like, all right, you know, it is what it is. You know, he'll leave me alone now. Not thinking that it was going to be anything further than that, you know. So, but gladly, I'm, I'm glad they got all that shit on video. Because you can see Kid Creole was not trying to be part of that shit. He was just like, look, leave me the fuck alone. Well, the fact of it is, the guy, when he came back, he wasn't like he was like, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, when he, he, if he, he got stabbed. like fatally stabbed, like, you know, like doing this, he walked back to his spot. Right. Exactly. Kind of regular. Just sitting there like, you know, all right, it is what it is, you know. So the only thing I don't understand, because what the what the guy was saying was, did he get into another altercation and he had to run oh, to like the... after the fact. Because yeah. this is the fact, like, yeah, because they went to the hospital. The man the man that, that Kid Creole stabbed, that it was a medicine. It was something that, it was a, it was a medicine... That he was supposed that he wasn't supposed to take, okay. like they use it to treat, you know, to put yeah, people but it, under. It backfired, and the reason why it backfired because it don't mix well with alcohol. Okay. The guy, the guy that came in was drunk, but yeah. he was two times over the legal limit. Right. So when they mixed that medicine with that, that it killed him. Yeah. But what they wanted to do instead of getting the lawsuit. That's why they was like, well, uh, Mr. I'm just saying Mr. Creole because yeah. I don't know his actual name, but his government. But it's like Mr. Creole, the, you know, da, da, da. and he's like, well, you know, this, this, you know, he was, you know, he was at, you know, yeah, but <coughs> thank you, but, thank, you um, thank you, but yeah, he's like, yeah, this guy was this and da da da, I, you know, I kind of got him off of me because he kept bothering me. And now they arrest him and then railroaded him. And then yeah. on top of that, the black the judge, who was black, a black woman, was saying that they couldn't, they didn't want him to um, hear his dissertation or, you know, anything to prove that, you know, prove his innocence or nothing. The jury wanted to hear. Right. But they like, nah, they blocked that. And then like what we were talking about, yeah, he uh, he beat the second degree murder charge. Yeah. But then he got plead with manslaughter. Yeah. And it's just like, man, like they, but what they basically did, they were, they're trying to not get sued and lose millions. Right. Because they, the hospital really killed that guy. Yeah. I and agree. That's, that's I agree. And up, I mean, that's really messed up. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, he got into an altercation with the dude, but that's not what killed him. Like you said, you can clearly see in the video, he walked away like he didn't even got hurt. Yeah. You wouldn't have even known if it wasn't for the hospital. And I want to say this, too. Jay, to Jay-Z, I want to, first of all, I will commend you for getting that law passed for the whole, because that's something I'm about to talk about, too, you know, the drill rappers. They beat, he got a word like they can't get, um, Incriminated with all the stuff they're oh, saying on the like from the lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so I want to, I want to, I want to shout that out. But this should be priority. Yeah, we we need to do something to get. I, I mean, I don't know what. I mean, you know what I'm saying. And I know. You, and again, not that I'm trying to actually talk to Jay Z. I know that you got other things and other things pressing. But this this dude's a pioneer. I mean. Actually, I can shout out Fat Joe. I mean, right. really, you know, because you did. I remember when you did the like the VH1. Remember the VH1 like Hip Hop Awards? Yeah. Like he he was. Um, I think he replaced Cowboy from the uh, Fat uh, um, the Furious Five Furious joint. Five, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you you need to do something. Absolutely. I man. mean, somebody. I mean, cause come on, man. Like you need some really good lawyers, man. Yeah. Um, I don't and, know if they can do anything at this point since they've already had the trial, but it's like somebody needs to yeah, should have been doing something. Yeah, like man, because that dude, I mean, that dude, I, like y'all wouldn't have a y'all wouldn't have a fucking job if it wasn't for him. Exactly. Y'all wouldn't have not that not that it's a job, but you know what I'm saying. Y'all wouldn't have nothing, man. Yeah. I mean, dude, like shoot, man, Grandmaster Five and Fury Five, but probably the one of the most influential groups. Absolutely. And hip hop period, man. So, Absolutely. Yeah, man, man. Like, and y'all gonna let my man just go to jail for man, that's just man, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's crazy, man. I, I just I hate that that happened. 
I'm glad we know a little bit more about the story. Yeah, that yeah, video helps yeah, a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, it really helps to see that, you know, he should be supported more. And I'm surprised, like you said, that no other rappers are really coming to his Yeah, defense. man, like, for real, because it's just, I mean, whether you, you know, like him or not, man, he don't, he didn't deserve this. Yeah. He didn't deserve this. Yeah, because he, he wasn't even out there looking for no trouble. Yeah, he, he just a man that was trying to go to work. Yeah, exactly. And it's, just, it's really sad, man, because it really goes to show you, no matter who you are, when you, you know, when you're in a certain, you know, I ain't going to say a certain suit, but I will, it don't matter who you are. If they want you to find you a scapegoat, yeah. they ain't going to, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's just. Yeah, man. Damn, all this fucking mass incarceration yeah, and man. shit like that going on. And, you know, it's like they try to make sure that we all get some sort of criminal record. Man. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? I, I, I ain't even going to get into that too heavy, man, but. Just know I got some shit on my record that shouldn't be there. Yep. You know, and some bullshit. And yep. it's typical shit. It's typical. Yeah, anybody. Know, yeah, yeah. Typical, yeah. you know, you know, uh, that those people type of shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I hate to say it, but, you know, I don't want to get too heavy into it because I don't want to seem like I'm just hating on all of them. But yeah. it's one of those typical stories where, you know, I'm just going to point the finger. But anyway, um, but yeah, so you know, uh, you know, we definitely gonna keep Kid Creole in our thoughts, and yeah, man. hopefully things work out where he can get a reduced sentence or something. I don't know how much time did he get. Did you hear? I think they they hit him for sixteen years, and Damn. the man's sixty two years old. Exactly. And he already served five. That's fucking I think sad, he can man. be. They're saying that he'll be able to get. He might be able to get out in eight. I think. Yeah, I was going to say at least five or more. He's probably going to have to serve. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, which is, you know, sad. But um, I don't know, man. I'm going to definitely keep uh, keep up with that story. So, anyways. Um, but, yeah, before we uh, wrap it up, we wanted to just talk a little bit more about, you know, versus and, you know, uh, how they, uh, you know, made that decision that, you know, kind of threw a lot of people off because, it was really funny, man. I remember I was looking for the show, and I'm like, okay, it's time for this shit to be on, but I don't see nobody going live. Trilla wasn't live. Versus Channel wasn't live. IG. Right. Yeah, and so I'm like, I'm, I'm messaging Howie, like, what the fuck is going on? And we messaged each other back, like, okay, and then I'm finally figuring it out. I said, I think they're making you pay for this shit. And so, you know, it really just, it was a gut punch for me, man. It was just like, y'all really did this shit on some sneaky shit. You know what I mean? Because y'all know y'all should have been clear about that. Uh, the only thing it said was, you know, something about a triller, um, get a triller pass. Yeah. It didn't say nothing about money. It was just like, you know, I was like, okay, well, what does that mean? Do I got to go to Triller's channel to look at it? You know what I mean? Do I got to go to their YouTube? Do I got to go to their Facebook? What do I got to do? And, you know, I'm searching all the way around and finally found out, oh, nah, they make you pay for that shit. I was yeah. like, nah, I don't give a fuck who it is. I mean, some of my favorite rappers, like Rock Him, Nah, I don't give a fuck if they was doing that shit. I'm not watching. I'm not going, you're not going to make me pay for some shit. That was that already was free. free. It was already free. It's for the culture. It was it's already like, damn. free. Now, if you did a pay-per-view event or something of that nature and had it promoted, you know, I can understand that. That's different. But yeah, what they did, they, yeah, you can't do that at the end. You know what I'm saying? If you if you started out saying like, okay, you know, Cypress Hill, you know, Onyx, this is the versus. This is going to be, you know, we need to do, this is going to be pay-per-view. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you yeah. said that out in the open, yeah, mm-hmm. maybe people would have considered and be like, okay. But then they made it, they made it like, what they did, they made it, um, yeah, it was like you said, it was sneaky. Yeah, just that fucking false advertising bullshit. Yeah, you can't do that. You know, they knew how to word that shit. And uh, nah, it was fraud. Yeah. No, nah, it ain't fraud. It was, <laughs> it was false advertising. Right. Nigga, that's fraud. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like all y'all. If y'all was smart, y'all could have said, because we're putting this together with a boxing match, to make sure that we get enough money, we have to charge for this. You know, it's not gonna be very much. It'll only be a couple dollars. But just be honest about it. Just be like, hey, yeah. it's going to be pay-per-view. All you got to do is pay like $2 or $5, whatever the fuck it is. And, you know, we just want to see how this goes. And if it goes well, 
we'll this maybe is keep it going in the future. Like, yeah, like this. You know? yeah. And if it doesn't go well, we'll go back to the real original format. But that's it. I mean, be honest. Just if you tell people what you're going to do, they know what to expect. But hitting us with that shit at the last minute where people like me are looking and looking. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Luckily, like you said, we had Rock the Bells. Yeah. Who went live from the location so that be we could at least TV. see some of it. You know what I mean? And that that was dope. Be Real TV. So, you know, you still missed a lot of it. But, you know, luckily we saw some of it. Yeah. And so if you were a real fan, you know, that helped you out a little bit. But it's really sad that, you know, they, they didn't get that shit together, man. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, it's definitely, um, yeah, it's definitely like a um, blow slap in the face of the group. Yeah. That's, that's that's what I'm disappointed in. Facts. It's, it's really a slap in the face. Facts. Because it's like, I work, they work hard to get this together. And then Twitter was just like, just disrespectful, man. Yeah, man. Talking about, oh, the Cypress and Onyx thing was going on last night. And they were getting these screw faces and. Yeah. And these people that don't know who, who you know, don't respect the culture were saying shit. And it's like... Yeah, just being stupid. Yeah, it's like, come on, man. Like, you know, that's, this is what they supposed to do. I mean, you know what I'm saying? And, but, I mean, I get it. You know, if, if, if it was like a little, too, you know, some little, you know, little shithead or something like that, right. we'd probably laugh too and say some disparaging things. But it's just like, man, just ridiculous, dude. So, my next question is, should we be upset at Timberland and Swiss for selling it to them? Not really. What's your take on that? I don't I don't think so, because my thing of it is, is this. When people, when people are, when business people are doing stuff, you know what I'm saying? They build things up, they sell it, they move on. Yeah. Now I will say I will say this: that they may may have sold it to somebody else that might had a little bit more consideration of the culture. Yes, I could say that. But as far as you know, I'm mad at them for selling it. No, that's their thing, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out to uh, Charles Brown, the guy that you you know the the guy that you shared. He did an excellent breakdown. Yeah, yeah, I really think yeah he did a real good job of explaining, you yeah. know, his disdain, you know, for this. Yeah, after I um, heard him, I was like, yeah, I gotta share this because he gives some good perspective on it. Yeah, so, you know, I like what he did. And um, but yeah, I, I can't, I can't fault them. I do, I do feel that like we as black people right now, uh, doing that, selling it, you know, prematurely may not be a good thing for us right now and I think we might should either wait till we sell something or sell it to like sell it to somebody that's you know know what to do as being a creative yeah you know what I'm saying so I mean I can't get mad at them yeah I feel you on that man I mean I ain't gonna lie I'm a little more 50-50 on it yeah I'm, yeah I'm yeah. a little upset at them but I'm also I get it like you said because it's a business and, you know, they were just trying to, you know, they weren't trying to do it forever. So I guess they just wanted to be able to capitalize and make them a little money off of it. And But on the same token, I like what you said. You know, it would have been better if you sold it to somebody who would have kept the culture going. And, you know, not really looking at it as a numbers game. Like, oh, yeah, we can make money off these rappers. Because Trilla sound like they don't give a fuck about rappers. They just want to make money. Well, it was more so versus than Trilla, really. Well, Trilla's the one that bought it, though. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, that's why I look at them. But either way, um, you know, Trilla owns Versus now. They're the ones who bought it from uh, Swiss and Tim. Yeah, yeah. But I just feel like, you know, I, I do feel a little disappointed in Swiss and Tim because I just feel like they should have at least taken the time to say, let's find somebody who really will keep this tradition going or somebody who will treat this as a real staple of the culture. Yeah. Not just, oh, well, these guys offered us a shitload of money. Let's let's give it up, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, that's what it kind of feels like they did because you really don't hear from them anymore. Nah. You know, they don't... And they were talking about... And remember when they first sold it, they were like, oh, yeah, we're going to still be uh, partners on yeah, it. They'll consult, uh, we'll yeah, be, consult. They'll consult with us and blah, blah, blah. I feel like... I don't even think that's happening. Nah. I don't think Swiss and Tim has shit to do with this, uh, this, this last versus. Nah. 
But, you know, so I'm a little on the fence about it. I don't like the fact that they sold it, but I do get it because, you know, they maybe maybe they want to get back to working their other projects, making beats and, you know, supporting the artists that they work with and doing whatever they want to want to do. But I thought that with their given their tenure in hip hop and their age, that things were probably not that hectic with their music schedules like this would have been something that y'all could have kept going because the older y'all get the less y'all probably gonna be making music yeah now they, they're both still making music but i'm just saying you're probably not doing it around the clock like you, you used to you, you know yeah yeah I mean? yeah you don't have the energy there's other yeah, yeah there's other I mean, things going on yeah timberland used to basically live in a damn studio you mm-hmm. know what i mean the way he was making music and swiss beats you know i mean he damn he, swiss beats might have must uh yeah swiss beats might as well have been a, a, a family member of Rockefeller. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was making all types of beats for them and Jay-Z. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but now, you know, all these it's all these younger producers that the kids are liking who are doing these drill beats and shit like that that, you know, the younger rappers want to do. So, you know, that's all I'm saying. So for that reason, I think they should have kept it or at least sold it to somebody who would have appreciated yeah, yeah, it more yeah, yeah. for what it was. That's all. Um, but y'all let us know in the comments, man. You know what I mean? Like, what y'all think? Because, you know, versus, I really think even though it was supposed to help us get through the pandemic, you know what I mean? Even if the pandemic was 100% over right now, which it's not, nah. um, you know, I would still love to see that because I don't give a fuck what I'm doing. If it's one of my favorite artists, I, like we always say, we'll take a fucking day off of work just to see that shit. Hell yeah, we go call it and see. You know what I mean? When they were talking about, you know, Big Daddy came in up there, I was like, nigga, yo, nobody. I was like, nigga, my been phone. Call <laughs> <laughs> How I got shot? Drag yourself to the hospital, nigga. Right. <laughs> you know, nigga. Do you hear this music in the background? Yo, <laughs> I can't come right now. Can't come right now. Man, damn, Put man. a bandaid on that shit, nigga. Yo, I'll be there in the morning. <laughs> tell one of them niggas to spit on it. You know, so yeah, man. But you know, it's just it, it's just really disheartening for me, man. I don't know, man. Call me just, you know, I'm such a hip hop head that I'm just like, this was so great for the culture. Yeah, man. And even when they did other stuff like R and B, you know what I mean? Uh, gospel, Patty Labelle, and the gospel. And, See, that's the thing you know, too. All that shit was dope too. That was the thing too. They said that the music soul child, the Anthony Hamilton thing, mm-hmm. they was going to charge then, but you know they didn't. You know, yeah. It's just like you just. Why would you experiment on like that? Like if you had like a smaller act. You know what I'm saying? I can understand, like, okay, we're going to yeah. experiment and see what this does. And see, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have done that to, like, nothing like that. Because, really, if you do that to a major act like that, when the next people come up, are they going to really come up? Right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Are they really going to, like, nah, I see what y'all do. No, nah, y'all not going to cipher Sheila and Onyx, man. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Exactly. And that's, it is, that's how it's going to, you know what I'm saying? That's how it's going to be. Yeah, and that's, you know, you know, be real, you know, he was like, he kind of felt disappointed too. He was like, y'all kind of used us, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And manipulated us, and we didn't even know this is what the fuck y'all were going to do. You know, we put on a good show, and most of the people who wanted to see it didn't get to see it. Yeah. So, you know, it's real fucked up, man. They could at least let the artists know, look here, we charging for this shit. <laughs> the fans don't know, but man, you really, y'all need to know, we charging for this shit. Yeah, man. So, you know, I just, I don't know, man. They fucked me up. So I don't know. I mean, it's gonna take some kind of big thing for them to earn my respect again. For them, for me to try to watch that shit again. Yeah. Because you know, don't just announce another one and just make it like you know, no big deal. You know, you need to be clear. Like we're not charging ever again. You know, we apologize. Or, or some shit, this you know? is this is the same price. Right. This is what, I mean, we still might get your thing. Right. <laughs> you see the gas station, you might get robbed. Yeah. Still. It's like I, I just I don't know, man. But that's all I got to say, man. You, you, did you have anything else to say about it? Oh, um, yeah. Like I said, man, they should have, they shouldn't have uh, experimented like that. I think it was just, uh, I think that was just a horrible mistake on their stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so definitely agree. I would like, I would hope they would get a do over. Yeah. I really would like for yeah, that yeah. to happen. That would be. Or nice. at least, you know, maybe them 
get a verse. I think they needed a little bit better of a matchup. That's just my opinion, that's, too. That's true. Very true. Uh, I think I'd, I'd have been more happy with Vomix and MOP. Because remember, we were already kind of feeling kind of fishy about that. Like, why are y'all putting these two together? It's still dope. They're dope groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was like, why are y'all putting these two together? It don't even match. Uh, yeah, that's good. We, you know, we could definitely come up with a better matchup. Yeah, um, that's what I'm saying. It's just, uh, they're like, where are those two hip-hop groups from the 90s? Just, Right. Throw them on in there. Just throw them on. <laughs> you know? That's just like, you yeah. know, yeah. we're going to put a, we're going to do a versus with MC Hammer and MC Brains, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, we're going to do a versus with PM Dom and KRS World right. so you can throw them <laughs> niggas off the stage. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, it still ain't a good matchup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's not gonna work out, no. you know. But it is what it is, man. You know, I, I, I mean, if they make more money off it, that's that's more power to them. I ain't gonna try to stop nobody's money. But oh no! I just wish I wouldn't have done it in that manner. Man, you yeah, know, yeah, man, yeah, it no. could have been done better. That's all. Yo, yeah, oh, yeah. So man. hopefully this is a lesson to Versus and Triller and all of them, whoever's behind the scenes, you know. But um, you know, like I said earlier, you know. Uh, Fuck Triller as a staff yeah, record label as a motherfucking crew. You want to be down with them? Fuck you, too. First, <laughs> fuck you, too. Right. <laughs> and that's yeah. the thing. The boxing match, I didn't know who the fuck was fighting. Me either. I I, 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 um, I kept seeing him saying it was fight night, but I thought it was more so just about the two rappers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm thinking, you know, and then right at the last minute, I think maybe the day before, I saw that it was a boxing thing, and I was like, oh, okay, so it's couple with some sort of boxing match but I didn't know who the, none of the people was in the picture so I was like alright either way as long as I get to see the fucking rap yeah the main seat. event yeah it, just did, yeah, it, it didn't that, make sense and at first remember we were trying to figure out well maybe the versus happens after the fight you know what I mean we was like yeah, okay maybe or, the fight's first maybe that's why we're not seeing the versus yet and you know it, it was a fucking mess man either way y'all fucked up that's all I'm gonna say <laughs> You know, <laughs> so uh, yeah, we uh, do we got any other sounds for verses and trilling? Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Ooh. Ooh. yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> so you know, th- maybe they're gonna do a uh, a versus with DJ Vlad <laughs> up against some other uh, podcaster or some shit, yeah, well, <laughs> against academics, yeah, just academics. <laughs> I mean, like, is academics. I, mean, you know, yeah, I don't know what happened, man. I mean, I just think it's, you know, you know they, didn't, they didn't they didn't do anything right for it, man. It's my horrible Vlad approach. Man, well, Vlad's horrible anyway. So yeah. You fucking... <laughs> well, yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I ain't got shit else to say, man. I'm just rambling at this point, so... You know, did you want to um, say anything else before we... Uh, oh, out? real quick, man, because I forgot to do this. My homeboy, Trey Gibson, his okay. son, Art, is 14 today. Okay, so happy wanna, birthday, yeah, young man. clap that up. I remember that kid. Happy birthday, Art. Yeah, I remember that kid when, like, I was went to college the first time, and I got a picture of him in my arm. Wow. And... Him putting on my little uh, Cookie Monster hat. You know what uh, I'm man, it's just, I had a little Cookie Monster fitted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think man. I've seen you in that before. Yeah, yeah. man. That's, man, 14 years, man. man yeah. It's like, it's fast, man. They go up fast, man. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. It's just, it's just crazy. Yeah. One of my, um, one of my nephews, man, I remember, you know, Holding him as a baby, and now he's like in the military and grown ass man. And I'm like, dang, it's hard to, you know, think of you like that. You know, you know, I remember just holding you in my arms, yeah. you know, just changing your diapers and shit. Yeah, you know? man. So just, you know, it's weird, man. But it's crazy, you know, it happens, you know. But anyway, um, you know, this has been episode two hundred seven. Two hundred seven. Triad Hip Hop Podcast. We uh, thank y'all for checking us out yet another week. Another um, one. Another one. <laughs> and uh, be here next week we're going to celebrate our five year anniversary no on episode no 208 you 208. know what I mean so you know we might actually have some big booty midgets big booty midgets you know something you know somebody just you know just dancing across the screen yeah. you know? <laughs> but uh, we shall see but, um, but yeah so uh, you know we're going to definitely try to do a big next week and thank y'all for supporting us 
Uh, for episode 207, this is your man, Kurt, and this is Howie. And we'll see y'all on the next one. Don't forget, check out the Lyrical Breakdown this week and the Lost and Thought, whatever we got going on. Be there. Or fuck you as a staff record label. <laughs> hey, don't you ever disrespect <laughs> us. You know what I'm saying with the Frank, you heard? You don't want us to shine. <laughs> you don't want us to shine right now, nigga. <laughs> yeah. All right, y'all. All right, peace. peace.